Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and this is day two of the Cube. We're here at the MIT Information Quality Symposium in Cambridge, Massachusetts. You know, the heart of data, certainly on the East Coast. Uh, I'm Dave Vellante, and I'm really pleased today to have Paul Gillen as my co-host. Paul is an author and a social media strategist and somebody that I've known for decades. Paul and I actually used to work together at IDG. You know, back in the day, Paul was the editor-in-chief at Computer World, and he was, of course, uh, employee number six at Tech Target, the, the, the media publication that really changed the, the, the online world. Paul, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. It's a delight to be here, Dave. I can't, it's, uh, it's been a couple years since you and I worked together, and I can't tell you what a thrill it is to be back, uh, uh, back on the I same I team. I love how our paths keep crossing, right? So we worked together, of course, as I said at IDG, but, but we spent a fair amount of time at the, uh, with the Mass Technology Leadership Council as well. And of course, you know, I've been busy, you've been busy. I haven't been as active. I don't know if you have been, but they've been a great you know, source of, uh, of gatherings in, uh, in this part of the world. Yeah, I haven't been very active in, in Mass TLC lately, just a lack of time, but uh, you and I uh, were, were at IDG together when you were at IDC. I remember running into you in a gas station, actually. I think that was how we sort of reestablished uh, uh, connections a few years ago. I ran into you in a gas that's station, right. and, and we, we, we exchanged cards, yeah. and then we wound up working on a project at IBM that's together, right, and, uh, right, and then you, you've yeah. been off to in Wikibon, and I, I just think uh, the way you guys are reinventing publishing, you know, it, it belies the, the idea that the publishing world is dying, which a lot of people say publishing is, is a dying market. It, it absolutely is not. It's being reinvented by companies like SiliconANGLE, Wikibon, uh, Spiceworks, uh, have figured out new media models that are working. Well, we talked about this the other day, my friend Charlie Sennett, who started the Global Post, is they have such high quality journalists and young people who want to be journalists, so you as a journalist, I th I'm sure, you know, m must have a, you know, a, a good feeling about high quality journalism, it's clearly not dead. People, people need great reporting. But uh, so we're here, I was thrilled to get the call from you whatever, whenever it was a couple months ago about the MIT, MIT Information Quality Conference. As I said in my remarks this morning, uh, Rich Wang was kind enough to give me five minutes to the, address the audience. We do a lot of stuff in big data here at SiliconANGLE and, and Wikibon and there's not been enough discussion about data quality. You know, a little bit, but very, very little. Security is just starting to, for example, hit you know, the, the discourse. But data quality and information qual quality has not. But what I like about this conference, it's hardcore information quality practitioners. The big role here, the senior role, is the, the CDO, the, the chief data officer. And I, I don't know, I would say most companies don't have a chief data officer. No, <laughs> I agree? think it's, it's something that's a luxury of the largest companies. And we have some very large companies at this conference, a lot of big banks, big healthcare organizations, a lot of government, uh, people from government. But generally, large companies are the ones that have the luxury to be able to, to devote resources to data quality, which is a shame when you think of it, because data quality is a problem at every, at every size company. Uh, but it becomes, I think, a more, a, a, an even more difficult problem with financially, re with regulated companies and those that have, that count their customers in the millions. Well, but here's the thing. So, uh, role-wise, everybody's focused on the data scientists, which is great, um, and a lot of people, you know, point out the skill shortage. But the other, you know, t uh, a meme that you hear is that companies need to be data-driven. You hear that bromide all the time. If you're going to be data-driven, you've got to have uh, somebody who's in charge, of a chief data guy, whether you call him or her a chief data officer, you know, really doesn't matter, but somebody's got to be responsible for the data and the, the adjacencies. So uh, we heard uh, Mario Favio today, who is the first chief data officer in Latin America with the division of Equifax. He listed, I think it was 11 areas and disciplines that he owned as the chief data officer. So it wasn't just data, it was policy, it was governance, it was the architecture, it was acquisitions, it was operations, and it was on and on and on. So, you know, a wide-ranging organizational challenges, but if you're going to be data-driven, you would, you would think you've got to have a, a, a data guru. So, that's some of the, what we're going to be covering here today. So, th and I think that, I don't know, do you think this, this notion of a chief data officer is, is going to expand, given the fact that people want to be data-driven? You know, it, it doesn't feel right to me, and, and I think that's because data is, is such an organizational issue, and having someone in charge of data, you know, one of the problems with creating a title and putting someone in charge of a function is that other people can then forget about it. <laughs> they don't have to worry about it because <laughs> we've got a chief, a chief marketing officer, we've got a chief information officer, that's their job. What I keep hearing at this conference uh, from these people who are CDOs is 
data is an organizational issue. Data entry, uh, you know, data becomes corrupted at the moment it's entered, and that's just the beginning of the problem. So you have to solve problems at almost every level to get, data, to get your data act together. And I, I would just worry about giving that task to one person and, and other people simply think that they don't have to worry about it anymore. So, that, you know, we heard today, so there's a panel, uh, uh, Derek Strauss was on yesterday, he's the CDO of uh, Ameritrade, TD Ameritrade, had a panel, one of his panelists was uh, Bruce Davison, he talked about, you know, uh, quality <laughs> metrics, and he, he talked about data supply chains, and, and we've talked here on theCUBE about th the data pipeline, the data factory, and, and how that, Basically, is what you're saying. It touches the entire organization. You can imagine water flowing through an organization, data flowing through an organization. So, well, and it changes the way organizations operate too, and, and it changes the, the the way they serve their customers. And I, I thought uh, I had a conversation yesterday with uh, Dat Tron, who was uh, the Veterans Administration keynote speaker in the morning from the Veterans Administration, and he was talking about. I, I thought he gave an example that that uh, 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 sort of beautifully uh, made this real. He was talking about the fact that a veteran now, to get benefits, has to, has to take proof of, of military service to the VA and show the, the VA that, they, that they're a veteran in order to just get enrolled in the program. And then if they want to enroll in a, uh, in a uh, apply for a benefit or enroll in an education course or something the VA offers, they have to find out about that, then they have to go and, and uh, apply for that, for that course or that benefit. And he was saying what should happen is, Automatically, anyone who uh, who's honorably discharged from the service should become part of the should should enter our records, and then we should be telling people about the programs that they're eligible for, instead of forcing them to prove to us that they have that eligibility. And when you think about how that would change the whole relationship between the VA and its constituents, that example I think can apply to every business. Yeah, absolutely. And that was the thing about that trend who came on the cube yesterday and. And I was just listening to him, and what he was describing at the VA, uh, you can see in so many commercial you know, businesses. So, so we're going to be unpacking a lot of those items to, today. Uh, Paul and I will be going wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is day two. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's coverage. We're here at the MIT Information Quality Symposium. Michael Nix is up, uh, up next. He's the Director of Analytics at Fletcher Allen Healthcare. Uh, we've got a number of practitioners, uh, consultants, and Paul and I will be opining and, and sharing our, our, our views as well as the, the audience view. So I'm at D. Vellante, he's at uh, P. Gillen, G-I-L-L-I-N, if you want to tweet us. Uh, keep it right there, we're right back with our next guest right after this.